<laughs> Hello, everybody. For all the students who are here, a very, very warm welcome. Warm welcome to the family. As you always say, welcome to the family. Uh, now, um, you know, before we get on to today's session, uh, I want to talk about some, some things that probably are going on in your head, considering today's environment. And I want to tell you a small incident of what happened with me uh, you know, uh, when I was, uh, when I was passing out, you know, uh, unfortunately, when I was passing out, almost all empty programs were sealed. There was technically uh, no place uh, you know, for management trainees in any other hotel chains, you know, but this German chef that I trained under, uh, he told me, and that thing is stuck in my head. He says, cowboy, he used to call me cowboy. He says, cowboy, don't worry. As long as people have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you will have a job. And that is something that has stuck with me for the rest of my life. So that's what I want to tell you guys, that what you're getting into is, is recession proof. Don't worry about it. You know, tough times are not, not tough times. People will still be eating. They will still need to be served. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 the worries, if you have any, you can cast them aside and focus on gaining as much as you can over the next three years. This is very important to understand that what is at least this industry doesn't matter. You are so absorbing and how many new skills you are picking up in this industry doesn't matter. In industry mein matter karta hai. Uh, there are ups and downs uh, in the world economy and so on and so forth. But what is definitely doesn't go up and down is the fact that everybody in this world has to have three or at least two meals. And if you are the one who's cooking those meals, imagine 7.3 billion people is, is your market. So, you know, let's put that aside. And today I'm going to say the same thing. All you cowboys, don't worry about it. As long as people have breakfast, lunch and dinner, you will do well for yourself because you have chosen uh, an industry and you've chosen an alma mater, um, an institute that sort of uh, will take care of it. All you need to do is uh, devote. All you will need to do is get absorbed and absorb as much. And all you need to remember is this is like riding a bicycle. Somebody will give you uh, a hundred page manual. You can read it for five years. You won't be able to ride a bicycle. You need to be able to ride a bicycle to ride a bicycle. So, you know, do as much uh, as you can. That is the only way uh, forward. Yeah. Now with that, we'll talk about... Uh, what cooking is and what what uh, uh, what it means uh, to all of it would have been great to sort of ask you, uh, but you know we'll figure out for now. Let it be a one-way communication. So a lot of people uh, think that cooking is magic. You know, a lot of people think uh, because it is an act of creation. Or kuch nahi se suddenly bahut kuch ban jata hai. To log lagta hai ki ye uh, jadu hai. Yeah, but if you have to historically uh, go down uh, the road, uh, you know, technically around 150,000 years ago, uh, this phenomenon of cooking uh, started. You know? And the phenomenon of cooking probably started with man's food that he used to eat raw, suddenly falling on a fire that he had created because by that time he'd learned to create and control fire. And then he probably realized that the taste of food has changed. Uh, ki baat ye hai ki ek, uh, 150,000 years change nahi The basic principle of cooking is still the same. The basic principle of cooking is uh, application of heat to an ingredient causes it to become more palatable is what we call more tasty and that's a basic premise aaj bhi wahi yani ki 150000 years mein kuch change nahi hua yeah so for you to understand cooking first of all you need to be comfortable with this magic of cooking and for you to understand the magic of cooking like any other magic there is science behind it and you need to be un able to understand uh, science behind it okay what I am going to give you at the end of this session, as I am going to give you two lenses. I will give you two lenses. And if you look at all the food, you will see the lenses. So 
आपके लिए खाने को समझना बनाना और रेप्लीकेट करना इजी हो जाएगा एवरी थिंग दैट यू डू इन द फूड वर्ल्ड कैन बी व्यूड थ्रू टू लेंसेस ओके द फर्स्ट लेंस दैट यू नीड टू व्यू कुकिंग फ्रॉम ओके इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हीट ओके एंड वॉट इज हीट डूइंग टू योर फूड any anything that is cooked all right technically it gets cooked because heat is applied to it and heat gets applied in various forms it can be dry heat it can be moist heat you know various forms of heat sort of gets applied to it there is a certain reaction that happens to an ingredient before heat was applied and after heat was applied it is very important to understand and break down एवरी रिएक्शन से अगर दाल है तो पकने से पहले कैसी थी पकने के बाद कैसी है क्या चेंज हुआ वॉट चेंज डिड द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हीट इन ड्यूस इन एवरी इंग्रीडियंट इन दैट रेसिपी इज वन लेंस दैट यू ऑलवेज हैव टू कैरी विद यू एंड पुट इट ऑन वेन एवर यू आर लुकिंग एट द प्रोसेस ऑफ कुकिंग ओके समथिंग एज बेसिक एज uh a uh, uh, talka or a bagar you know if you have a bagar and if i were to give you uh, a rai and curry leaf to eat like that you probably would find the rai bitter but the moment i put it in a talka suddenly the rai becomes nutty the curry leaf the curry leaves become aromatic now it is very important for you to first observe the reactions that heat causes in food okay for your ability to do that um, you need to be able to understand the ingredients and what they were before cooking and what they are after cooking and that is very very important for all of you to understand aapko aap sabko ye samajhna bahut zaruri hai ki garmi se is khane mein kya change hua okay uh, aur ye aapko agar aapko chef banna hai to ye aapko sari zindagi ye chashma apne sath carry karna padega to be able to wear it uh, when when uh, you want to understand food better and cook food better the second uh, uh, lens that you need to and i will i will sort of explain these lenses in due course of time but the second lens that you will have to understand is there's another reaction that is happening uh, when you're cooking and that is the reaction of how various ingredients react with each other okay and that is something that uh, that is something that sometimes takes a little more experience but it's a skill that you need to continue to hone over um, over the years bahut important hai aapko uh, wo skill ko hone karna ke alag alag ingredients jo agar aap alag alag taste karenge aur cooking mein unko ek sath taste karenge to unme kya badlav aata hai Hmm? the these are and this is pure science okay and i'm going to sort of dwell on that science for you it is but for all of you who are not science students it is not rocket science okay it is something that you studied in class 5th 6th 7th 8th it is something uh, probably which you didn't think of uh, applying in the food world uh, but you know like everything else uh, cooking is also science and for you to build on that art uh, you need to understand the science first okay so so far what we've done is we've all called you cowboys and told you not to worry about anything okay we've all told you that jab tak log khana khayenge aapke paas kaam rahega isliye wo cheez nikal dijiye dimag se uske baad humne ye samjha ke khane ka jo perspective hai the perspective of food and the idea of cooking is the same for the last 150000 years it has not changed cooking was and cooking still is the application of heat to an ingredient okay uh, only thing that has changed is pehle aag hoti thi ingredient hota tha fir kahin beech mein bartan aa gaya wo bartan pehle patthar ke the fir mud ke the fir copper ke the bronze ke the fir steel ke hue fir lohe ke that is the only thing that has changed otherwise it's just 
the application of heat to an ingredient. That was the second part that we have covered so far. It is important for you to keep understanding that and telling yourself that so you become more comfortable with the process of cooking, saying, Hum kuch naya nahi seek rahe. Ek, ek lakh pachas azar saal se wahi hai cooking jo aaj hai. Kuch change nahi hua. It makes you feel more comfortable. The next thing that we discussed so far was that you need to have two lenses with you. Aapko kisi bhi cooking process ko dekhne ke do chashme aapke paas hamesha hone chahiye. Ek to ye ke heating se pehle wo ingredient kya tha. Heating ke baad wo ingredient kya hua. Or dusra wo bunch of ingredients jab humne unko heat kiya to unke aapas mein re, aapas mein unhone kaise react kiya. These are the two lenses that you need to look at from a food uh, perspective throughout. And it's very important for you to keep these two lenses with you. This is what we have covered so far. Okay. I'm just going to, for now, I'm going to explain uh, these two lenses with some examples. So you get a better idea of what I was saying. Okay. Um, everybody, uh, I hope everybody is with me so far. Now, let me give you the example of the most basic example of a chicken tikka. Okay. A chicken tikka is great. You marinate it and it is the tastiest marination. Uh, but when does the magic happen? The magic happens when you put it in the tandoor. What happens in the tandoor? In the tandoor, uh, heat uh, application happens like any other cooking. You can put it in a pan. What will happen? Heat application will happen. You can put it in an oven. What will happen? Heat application will happen. So essentially the process of cooking involves application of heat to a marinated or non marinated ingredient, whatever it might be. Now what happens when the heat application happens to a, um, a chicken tikka? Now let's see it through these two lenses that I gave. you. Okay. Now let's look at every, let's look at every um, item individually. Okay. There is chicken, there is yogurt, there are spices, there is probably mustard oil, and then there is ginger garlic paste. Let's understand ingredient by ingredient, put these lenses and see what happened. The, let's pull, pull out the chicken first, because that's the most important part. That's the protein. Uh, is the chicken palatable before application of heat? Can you eat raw chicken? No, you cannot. So the first thing that happens to a chicken is the protein inside the chicken cooks. Now, how does the protein inside the chicken cook? The protein inside the chicken cooks with the heat and the water that is present inside the chicken. The water inside the chicken evaporates and the protein inside the chicken cooks in that water that is already present inside the chicken which we have locked inside the chicken with the marination. So kya hua? Chicken ke andar ke pani ne chicken ke andar ka protein paka diya. Hmm? Pakaan, protein ka jo pakane ka process hai, usko denaturization bhi bolte hai. That's the first change that has happened. It is important for you to observe this change. Can you do anything about that change? We are not scientists. And even if we wanted to, if that change hasn't changed in the last 150,000 years, then all we need to do is make friends with that change and use that change that happens with the application of food to become better chefs. Okay. What happens to the spices? Now, what happens is all the spices have essential oils in them. Okay. Now all the essential oils, uh, they are locked inside the spices, but when you get heat, when, even when you take a spice on your hands and rub it, give it, a little bit of heat and you smell it, it smells. When you, when you have perfume, why do you smell it? Why do you rub your hand, put it behind your hand where it is the warmest and then smell it? Because essential oils, whether it is perfumes or spices, they evaporate when, when you apply heat to them. And when you apply heat, they evaporate and you smell them. That was the second part, before and after. Okay, before application of heat, my lens is still the same. Before application of heat to an ingredient, after application of heat to an ingredient. We've gone through chicken, we've gone through spices. Now let's look at yogurt, let's look at dahi. Okay, now what happens when you apply heat to a dahi? It splits, yeah? But what is the positive 
irrespective of splitting dahi has natural like any other milk product it has two things it has fat and not fat the fat when it comes out it creates um, it leaves those flavors and it acts as a combining fat uh, combining agent for those flavors the solids the milk solids not fat when they uh, react with heat they undergo a reaction called browning reaction which you guys will study okay now what i did was i sort of told you that every time you apply heat to a chicken this 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 is what's going to happen every time that you apply heat to spices this 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 this, this is what is going to happen what is going to happen now when you know that this is what is going to happen you can work with it you can work around it you can make it better okay for example if you are to put if you are if you are putting uh, unroasted raw coriander to finish a dish when it does not have uh, so much opportunity with heat to lose those oils you know that that is the mistake you made because spices if they are unroasted need heat for them to leave their flavors if your chicken is raw you know that the protein cooks with the water that is inside which means either i have to apply more heat or i have to apply heat for more time so heat can be studied two ways okay cooking is about two things it's about application of heat but it's about the temperature and time how do you manage heat aap manage heat aise karte hain ya to aap samay badha dete hain kisi cheez ko pakane ka ya aap tapman badha dete hain so any any place that you want to manipulate heat it's a function of temperature and time okay for example if i'm cooking my chicken and i wanted to cook fast either and i wanted to cook well either i cook it at 160 degrees for 1 hour or 200 degrees for 30 minutes i increase the time in one case and i increase the temperature in one case so to understand and manipulate heat you have to understand cooking may heat is a function of time and temperature and it's about finding the right balance of time and temperature for eventually good cooking okay whether it is the range of your burner or it is the temperature on your uh, oven time and temperature is what determines application of heat okay so i'm going to remove this chashma what i did was i wore the chashma of heat and gave you examples of how ingredients react prior to application of heat and after the application of heat okay now and then i also told you that when i say heat there are two parameters uh, on how you can allow heat to affect your food and those ingredients one is time and the other is temperature which essentially means cooking may समय और तापमान सबसे जरूरी होता है ओके एवरीथिंग विल कुक व्हेन यू अप्लाई इफ आई पुट इफ आई पुट अ चिकन टिक्का इन द तंदूर एट 300 डिग्रीज देन आल्सो इट विल कुक इट विल बर्न इट विल चार एंड देयर अदर थिंग्स दैट विल हैपन दैट आई डिड नॉट वांट ओके सो टू बी अ गुड शेफ आई नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हीट टू अंडरस्टैंड हीट आई नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड टाइम एंड टेंपरेचर एंड व्हाट डिफरेंस do various combinations of time and temperature cause to my food ye bahut ye jo hai uh um uh gaant bandh lijiye ye sare cheeze aap always keep these this understanding in your pocket always keep this understanding in your pocket saying okay so what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to cook it but the first question should be at what temperature am i cooking it and how long am i cooking it for all right because if you don't have control over time and temperature you will not have control over your dish you will not know what changes to make in order for the dish to cook better the next time all right that was part 1 part 2 now let's look at the second lens dusra chashma dekhte hain hum and the second lens that we want to look at is what happens to these individual what we looked at was all these ingredients individually now let's look at what happens to these to all these ingredients कंबाइन क्या होता है जब जब हम जब कुकिंग होती है तो अलग अलग इंग्रेडिएंट्स साथ में आते हैं तो उनमें क्या होता है ओके नाउ देर आर लॉट ऑफ रिएक्शंस दैट हैपन एट टू लेवल्स 
वन इज अ मैक्रो लेवल मैक्रो लेवल मतलब वो इंग, वो इंग्रेडिएंट्स जो कि मैक्रो न्यूट्रिएंट्स हैं जैसे कि प्रोटीन शुगर्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स फैट्स वो एक किस्म का रिएक्शन होता है जो कि ज्यादातर आपके खाने के टेस्ट और टेक्सचर को इम्पैक्ट करता है एनी चेंज एनी चेंज इन फूड खाने का जो स्केल होता है द हाउ यू मेजर फूड इज टेक्सचर टेस्ट फ्लेवर ओके प्रेजेंटेशन इज ऑलवेज देयर बट बट वेन यू आर ईटिंग समथिंग यू ऑलवेज लुक फॉर फ्लेवर टेक्सचर इन टेस्ट ओके वेन यू से फ्लेवर टेक्सचर इन टेस्ट टेक्सचर मीन्स सॉफ्ट क्रंची यू नो क्रिस्पी जूसी दीज आर ऑल टेक्सचर जो कि आप महसूस कर सकते हैं टेक्सचर इज समथिंग दैट यू कैन फील इट्स अ टैक्टाइल सेंस ओके नाउ टेस्ट टेस्ट इज वेरी सिंपल देर आर एनीथिंग दैट यू कैन काउंट ऑन फाइव फिंगर्स इज टेस्ट सो स्वीट सावर salty spicy uh that essentially uh, is sweet sour salty spicy and bitter these are the five tastes the sixth taste is umami so always pull out your five fingers remind yourself of these uh, of these shad rasas or these panch rasas that are there in your five fingers that is the five parameters of taste that you're looking at so texture is what you feel taste is these five things and flavors okay now when you're looking at flavors you always need to remember that flavors is something that you immediately get reminded of when you eat something okay for example if you are eating uh, a dish that you've never eaten but it's reminding you of your dal that your mom cooks it's okay just lock that flavor in your head saying this is like the dal that my mom cooks it's very important not to get confused in this world of flavors because uh, as you go along you will realize that your vocabulary of flavors is increasing after some time uh, uh, you know uh, smoky is going to become a flavor blueberry is going to become a flavor oak is going to become a flavor a lot of these new words are going to come in your flavor profile but for now don't get confused whenever you are understanding cooked food look at it from taste texture and flavor where flavor is whatever connection you make of it is flavor agar aapko jamun jaisa lag raha hai wo to jamun is the flavor that you want to associate it with okay so in these three parameters is how you will measure reactions with the second lens like the first lens ka parameter is temperature and taste because it is about purely the application of heat to an ingredient the second lens ka parameter is taste texture and flavor taste remember those five things texture is how you how it feels does it feel dry does it feel juicy when i taste it how does it feel does it feel crunchy does it feel crispy does it feel slimy does it feel liquidy does it feel snappy how does it feel that's texture tactile okay and flavor flavor is the first connection you make with it in your head from your memory that is flavor so for understanding the second chashma you need to keep these things with you all the time now what happens when you when you cook a combination of all these ingredients changes the taste texture and the flavor of food so if i were to look at a chicken tikka again now suddenly when i taste it i see it is a little sour it is a little bitter it's a little sweet okay now the sweetness is coming from the chicken it's also coming from the sugars in the milk solids uh, the sourness is coming from yogurt the spiciness is coming from the marination now suddenly all of this together combined every ingredient once heat got applied it all came together as a dish which i can judge on these three parameters which is taste texture and flavor okay or if this combination is not working you need to break it down saying okay what is not working is the taste not working 
is the texture not working is the flavor not working and then go backwards and change it for example while texture and taste is easy to understand when i have a chicken tikka uh, is it reminding me too much of a uh, of um, um, uh, let's say dal muri okay now if it's reminding me too much of a dal muri that essentially means i my mustard in the chicken tikka is too high that's why i'm getting reminded of a dal muri more than a chicken tikka so the connections that you make automatically allow you to go back and fix food okay so what we what we did today is essentially first we spoke about how cooking is an old science and all that cooking is is the application of heat to an ingredient then we said okay if it is about application of heat then it is very important to understand what the application of heat does to every ingredient for which you need to study from your books also okay there is an author called harold mcgee h a r o l d m c g e e okay he is the author who is extensively written on uh, and his most of his work is available online he is extensively written on what happens when you apply heat to ingredients you probably need to read about him you need to read his work even if you don't understand it it's all right it's good to know you will gradually understand it when you start cooking and you keep that lens on it will all start making sense okay so the second thing that we discussed was application of heat to every ingredient and how do ingredients react and why do they react the way they react to the application of heat application of heat can be dry heat moist heat you know um, oil based heat you will learn you will learn all that as methods of cooking essentially the same thing um now when we moved ahead we understood that when we say application of heat it is two parameters that we need to understand in application of heat we need to understand that application of heat is about time and it is about temperature it is not about any one okay it is not about saying uh, oh pakana hi to hai to gas tez kar do okay it is not food food will cook but what is that optimal balance of time and temperature is what determines good chefs from great chefs and that's what you always need to have as a lens uh throughout uh whenever you're cooking saying what time and what temperature works best we all know that if if we put um, you know if we put mutton at really really high heat it might cook but it will never be juicy why because there is a time and along with temperature there is also time that we need to respect when it comes to cooking heat does not only mean temperature heat means time and temperature that was the other part that we learned okay i'm just revising it because if you're writing it you need to go back if you need to append your notes uh, now is a good time then we said okay now we've understood what heat what reaction does heat cause individually to an ingredient even if we have not through chicken tikka we have at least opened the doors on how to use the lens you need to keep the lens with you and use the lens for the rest of your life if cooking is something that you want to do then we said in the second part what do we need to do we said in the second part let's now understand how these ingredients come together and what are those reactions that happen um when i look at ingredients separately versus how they come together and that we said happens by studying three parameters of cooked food it happens by studying taste which is the shad rasas or the panch rasas just remember five fingers five rasas khatta meetha tikha kadwa or namkeen just remember that when i say taste it should automatically you should be able to lift your five fingers and say how sweet how salty how bitter how uh spicy and how sour okay everything will have that everything will have five rasa it's impossible for some things might be more sweet some things might be less sweet the the sweetest of desserts have a note of bitterness and a note of natural saltiness in them the spiciest and the most bitterest of things have a note of sweetness in them only thing that happens is some things uh, in some dishes it goes higher something some dishes it goes lower in some dishes it's very very small 
in some dishes is extremely high. But anything that you taste, you need to find those pancharasas. Okay, I'm not talking about umami. You will get there. Let's start with these five. Five rasas. So, when you're saying, Dusra chashma pehna hua hai, usme sabse pehla parameter taste hai. Taste mein aapki atheli turand nikal jani chahiye. Aur aapko kisi bhi khane ko in paanch taste ke saap se samajna ana chahiye. How sweet, how bitter, how salty, how spicy, how sour. Dusri cheez jo humne boli, wo thi texture. And then, again, we are in the second chashma. Second chashma mein, uh, understanding texture is really important because texture is how you feel. Texture is the tactile sense, the sense of touch. Agar aap kisi cheez ko feel karte ho, agar aap kathal ko upar se feel karte ho, you don't feel pleasant when you, when you rub the skin on it. Why? Because feel is very, very subconscious. It triggers a sense of distaste and dislike immediately. Okay. However, when you eat a chicken tikka, you, it is juicy. The texture is juicy. You feel it's nice. When you eat, uh, when you eat a golgappa, fuchka, pani puri, pani batasha, fulki, whatever you call it, <coughs> you, are, uh, you are enjoying the texture because there is a snap on the outside and it's nice and liquidy on the inside. So texture is the, how you feel mentally and tactile style wise and physically how you feel and that is why taste texture are both really important when you are studying cooked food after putting the second lens the third thing that we discussed was flavor okay and i what i told you was that flavor is extremely extremely overrated and complicated what you need to start on your journey of flavor is just start connecting what you are tasting elements of what you're tasting to uh, what you have tasted before and gradually your vocabulary will increase you will have more examples to give to yourself all of us is, uh, flavor is a matter of life experience when you eat more taste more you will your vocabulary of flavor is going to increase for now if you're tasting chicken tikka then if the mustard reminds you of jhalmuri that is okay if the mustard reminds you of the the bhajia that your grandmother makes in sarson ka tel, that is okay. What you need to do is find a connection point in your head to be able to understand flavor. Uh, understand it the way you want to, but make that connection for everything that, that is coming into your head. Saying, oh, achha, wo bhajia jaisi mustard nest thi. Oh, wo, uh, maine wo chicken tikka masala ya butter chicken khaya tha, uske jaisa kasuri methi ka flavor tha. It's all right. Doesn't really matter. Nobody's saying blackberry. Um, no, nobody is saying sweet like blackberry, tart like plums. Okay? Make the connection the way you want to make those connections. As long as you make those connections, you would have started to understand this world of flavor. All right? Uh, and that, for me, is more or less everything that you do for the rest of your life. If you keep these two lenses on, it will make you a better chef. If you keep these two lenses, one lens is what is happening to every ingredient individually when I cook it. And the second lens is what's happening to collectively to all ingredients when it becomes a dish. dish parameters taste, texture, flavor parameters. Throughout not just these three years, throughout your life, you will become better chefs. Even if you don't want to become chefs, you will understand food better than uh, most people that you meet. Um, but it's very important to do that. Okay. And always remember, cooking is, it is science. You cannot deny it, but it is not rocket science. It's basic science. It's the most basic science that you can encounter. You learned in, in, the organic chemistry that you learned in eight, which you probably didn't really care about then, is going to come in very handy when you really want to delve deeper into cooking. What happens? Why do sugar caramelize? What happens when in a, when sugar that is C, H, and O, uh, why does it become black? Because H and O leave uh, the C, H, and O compound as H2O, water. And what's left is C. 
C is carbon. Carbon is black. That's why sugar caramelizes. That's why sugar becomes black. You need to be able to understand the most basic. It's very basic science. But if you build your cooking on science in the first four or five years, then you can create magic on top of that. You cannot create magic without understanding the science behind that magic. Okay. You give me any reaction, it can be explained with science. Okay. Every flavor that you that you see is purely ethers and esters, which which is something that you read in class eight or class nine, but never really cared about. Ki humne isse kya karna. Yeah. Remember that toothpaste like smell that used to come when you used to put uh, put when you used to do ethers and esters experiments in uh, chemistry class in eighth. That essentially is all uh, most flavor compounds in, in fruits are ethers and esters until unless you understand how they react to uh, heat, you will not be able to understand the magic of cooking. So, so that's all. It's very basic science, but it's important to understand that science. It's important to, you don't have to do a PhD in it. Okay. But it's important to remember that if you want to be, uh, if you want to do magic, you need to understand this science today. I'm not going to complicate your life anymore. Okay, a lot of it is in, in, your, in your first year, um, uh, first year uh, uh, syllabus. For example, basic scientific reactions like emulsification, which you read in 7th and 8th, what is sedimentation, what is suspension, what is emulsion. All these things will come in front of you. Please be open. If you don't understand emulsification today, Mayonnaise, Hollandaise, or Bohot Tamam Taranke scientific processes, Jomari cooking go better Kerte, who up shad nay summer spying, Unko master nay kerpang ya never a time. Okay, so it's whatever you're going to study in the first year, especially, is going to be a lot about the most basic science, which is explained really, really well. Be open to it. Be open to it. Okay, after. A few years is going to become your second nature. You won't even need to think about how to make an emulsion or what is a stabilizer. Yeah. So uh, that's whether it is, uh, you know, what we spoke was that cooking is the application of heat to an ingredient. That's basically what your definition of cooking is going to be. And then in your book, there, is going to be, there are going to be various methods, whether it is moist heat, moist heat is boiling. Uh, moist heat is boiling, steaming, dry heat is baking, broiling. It's all the same. Everything can be viewed with those two lenses. Okay. And I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it here. But like I said, it's not rocket science, but it's science and it's important to understand it. I'm going to answer these important questions. The first important question is secrets to being a celebrity chef. The important secret to being a celebrity chef, I'm sharing it with all of you, is you have to work really, really, really hard at being a good chef. Okay. Uh, unless you're able to do that, uh, you really can't be um, a celebrity chef of substance because you can't always look at the camera and smile. At some point in time, you will have to meet people. And when they see the real you, you need to have substance, you need to have knowledge, you need to have um, a relationship with food that inspires them. Okay. That's the secret to being a celebrity chef. Be a good, a good chef first. And then it will be much easier for you to become a celebrity chef. Super chef. That was superly well. And few questions coming in. I'll take it for you. Um, sure. I've got a sort of asking from Calcutta proper definition of emulsification. So a sort of emulsi emulsification is the is basically uh, creating a solution of two uh, ingredients that would not match. Okay, two ingredients that would otherwise separate when you bring them together and you create a stable solution. It's called emulsification. Those ingredients can be water and air. Those ingredients can be water and oil. Those ingredients can be oil and air. Any two ingredients that would otherwise not combine, when you combine them to form a stable solution, 
is emulsification. In cooking, you do that all the time with mayonnaise. You do that all the time with hollandaise. You emulsify most of your sauces when you finish them by a process called vermonté, in which you incorporate butter to to a sauce to finish it. That is uh, that is emulsification. All right, uh, chef. Another question coming in is um, from. Uh, Divyam, Section A, Delhi. What was the main thing which helped you achieve success in your life? Of course, little related to your life, not to the subject. I think, I think what is important is uh, um, again, it's uh, probably a little uh, too heavy for all of you right now. But what's important is to understand that uh, that success is is a measure that's generally set by the outside world. You know. Um, and the moment you sort of start chasing that measure, you're never successful because the outside world keeps lifting that bar. Uh, so <laughs> what's important to understand is never chase success. Never, never chase success. You know, always internalize things. Set goals for yourself. Set goals that are higher than the goals that the others have set for you. Uh, that's the only way to get ahead of this, this whole success phenomenon. You, you say I'm successful. I say I'm extremely unsuccessful. I have a long way to go because your measure of success is not what I'm chasing. I might have crossed it, uh, fortunately, but uh, it doesn't really mean that, uh, that because you say I'm successful in my head, I'm successful. I'm not. So always, always set your standards of success. Don't chase it. Always set your standards of success. And unless your standards are way higher than what, what, what what uh, the measure of success currently is, there's no point even chasing. Super. Sir, um, Disha Jaiswal asking us from Delhi, how much time it will take for us to learn how to balance between heat and time? Well, it's an ongoing journey. I'm doing that still. It's an ongoing journey. It's a, this, see, these are lenses that you always need to keep. These are questions that you always need to ask. I ask my, whenever I cook something, I ask myself these things. I have become better at it. You know, in, in some more years, I will become really good at it probably. But you really can't master, master uh, temperature and time because you really can. That's the whole beauty of this journey called cooking is that you, you enjoy the journey of balancing uh, temperature and time. What you will definitely get is if you, if you, if you use these lenses in the next two to three, four, uh, two to three odd years, you will have a fair idea of what, uh, what uh, graph of temperature and time works for what sort of ingredient. Isko kam samay mein lambe samay tak, kam temperature pe lambe samay tak pakana hai. Isko zada tapman mein kam samay tak pakana hai. Ek rough idea aapko lag jayega. Lekin har combination, har dish ek unique combination hai. Jisko ek unique treatment chahiye temperature and time ka. And that is, it's like putting a Lego piece together. You enjoy it every time you put it together. Super. Uh, Chef Vishal Venkatesh from IIHM Bangalore is asking uh, that there's a saying that the recipe is the same, ingredients are the same, process is the same, but food is cooked by different people in different hands, which makes the difference in taste. Uh, your views on this and why is it so? Yeah. I think when you are in third year, I will probably explain that to you better. Uh, you know, those things, um, those things, there is a tangible part to food. Kuch cheeze khane mein measure ho sakti hai. Kuch cheeze measure nahi ho sakti hai. Jo measure nahi ho sakti hai, wo philosophy ke realm mein jati hai. Jo jab aap third year mein pahunchenge, to bhoat behtar tarikhe se samjhenge. To ab mein aapko samjhaunga. Aaj ki, aaj ki date mein aapko science samajna bhoat zaruri hai. Is liye mein aapko distract nahi karunga. Okay, when you reach third year, we'll, we'll pick up that question. We'll take that topic and we will break it down for you as to what is it about food that you cannot measure and why, what is it about the human touch that makes a difference? Why do we talk about feelings? Why do we talk about emotions when it comes to food? Okay. For you right now, as in first year and second year, it's very important to hone these two lenses, scientific lenses, because art is built on an understanding of science. Even when you are an artist, you need to understand principles, of art and elements of design, you cannot uh, you cannot be a magician without structure. Okay, so we'll make you Picassos, 
don't worry about it but currently focus on the science behind it super uh, chef another question coming in from calcutta sunshine is asking this is temperature and time are inversely proportional in cooking doesn't uh, doesn't uh, uh, really matter more or less you could put that across saying ha agar main kahin pe bhi temperature bada raha hu to mere ko time kar, kam karna padega because uh, the impact of that temperature has to be reduced agar main kisi ko 300 degree pe paka raha hu aur 3 ghante ke liye paka raha hu to obviously wo koila ban jayegi uh, broadly they are inversely proportional but the understanding here is not uh the understanding here is more to do the relation to do with the relationship between both all right great thank you chef uh, with these asking uh, how will you know that the ingredients which you are putting is done correctly or the right ingredients are going in a dish you can start with you can start with uh, uh working with recipes that that others have worked with so you know see what is what is important is it's important to when you're starting on your journey it's important to cook dishes that have been cooked before okay for you to gain that confidence and for you to be able to understand what is good food and what is good science that creates um, good food once you are done with that and you have done that enough that is the time when you can apply your brain and decide what is going to be a good set of ingredient for creating a new uh, new dish what's very important for you right now is as per years just stick to the basics cook recipes that are sure cook recipes that have been cooked cook classics that don't fail for you to understand that before you start deciding what combination of ingredients sort of goes well together it's very important for you to cook full proof in the first year to be able to appreciate cooking and understand good food okay just about time to take the last question in we about 1 minute to 1 so likita babu is asking this question can you refer few books relating to the science you had explained just now some few books that you can refer or so they we can buy i uh, i think in the first year i wouldn't i wouldn't suggest any books you probably can uh, go to uh, harold mcgee's website the curious cook if you want to get his uh, you know uh, book or i think it'll be there in your libraries when you access your institute uh, beyond that you know uh, your basic cookery books is what you really really need to uh, get to um what i told you was that you need to keep these lenses on life will get complicated after first year that's when you will need to get those books i'm not going to tell you those names now i'm going to leave it with with uh, my friend abdullah so uh, when you get to second year we'll talk about those books guys it is very important to understand agar acha chef banna hai to sabse pehle acha hamal banna acha masalchi banna bahut zaruri hai you need to learn to be a bloody good listener and a very very good and obedient cook before you start being a chef you need to learn you need to remember that the only way to learn writing books is to learn from alphabets whatever you know so far is great but it will not help you you need to unlearn and you need to say okay let's start from abc once again you need to be structured when the reason you are in an institute is because we are trying to put structure to your education aur wo structure agar aap break karke aur pehle hi z pad lenge a ki bajaye to aapko ye lagega ki aapko aata hai lekin aapko kuch aata nahi hoga to aap aap a se lekar x y ko sab disregard kar denge kyunki aapko lagega ki aapne kitab ka aakhri panna pad liya kitab ka aakhri panna padne se sirf yahi pata lagta hai ki murder kisne kiya ye nahi pata lagta ki story kya hai okay this is a journey it's about a story take it step by step structure it well there is a re- reason why education is there because it adds structure to your learning structure yaad rakhna structure a before b b before c don't jump the gun you will have a wrong feeling that you know more you will not know more you will be aapko lagega it's like modern mystery ka last page example always remember that you will just feel that you know more you will not because to know more you need to know it all 
not know the last page. Super. All right. Thank you, Chef Ranbir. With this, we come to the end of the session. Loads and loads of questions I can see. Unfortunately, we are short on time. It was an absolute pleasure to have you, Chef Ranbir, with us. And um, for the last parting shot, I will take it to Dr. Bose uh, to bring him in and uh, say his few words before we close the session. Over to you, Dr. Bose. Yeah, once again, a fascinating, fascinating uh, session. Uh, chef, as usual, uh, uh, Ranveer Brad at his best. Uh, I think it was excellent, excellent, super, uh, very inspiring. And uh, look forward to more session uh, from the Maestro himself. And as I said to all my students that this is IHM education. So uh, this is not an YouTube lecture. So everything that you have learned today and everything you'll be learning from people like Chef Ranveer Brad needs to be put in a tablet, in a, in a notebook. And this is what the education is all about. This has been all the classes. These are not just YouTube lectures, which you can get free of cost in a, any, any channel. So uh, thanks very much, Chef, for being with us and look forward to see you soon. And uh, well, you are looking smashing as usual. I'm sure you your, loved it. Dr. Bose, the feeling is very mutual. So. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much. We'll catch up soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. International Institute of Hotel Management.